These are my solar panels in their wintertime location. I need to bring them a quarter mile north of the cabin into an open clearing so that I, I get the sun. At 48 degrees north, the December and January sun doesn't get high enough over the trees to give me a good power. These panels came as a kit from Harbor Freight. They're two sets, they're 45 watt each. The cost is only about $150 and they're complete with the controls and everything and they fit together on a stand. They've worked out very well for me. Each one will put about 0.2 of a volt back in the battery in a day. So it would completely charge a car battery in three to four days. But I find that 0.2 to 0.3 is about the power that I'll use in a typical day by being conservative. This is the back of the unit with the battery and the detergent cases. I have covers that go over the top of that control to keep it up out of the moisture. You notice that the digital display is on right now telling me how many volts it's putting out. That's only on there to show in this picture because that again requires more power to run so we turn that off. You see the battery in this case is a battery out of a utility tractor. Very small battery about 300 amp starting hours or the rating and it's a new one but I just wanted to try and see how that would work but I can't make a decision on that yet of how that's going to work compared to the larger car batteries. The units are each mounted on a metal sled that I made out of old roofing material. That way I can slide them around and use them where the sun is shining the best for whatever season I'm here. Even at the cabin, when they're in the cabin yard, I can go out and, and move them easily from, from hour to hour, every few hours to, to gain some more power. This is where my solar panels would normally sit, but as you can see, we're 19 days past the winter solstice and the sun is only getting up near the top of the trees. It's noon right now and I'm pointing directly south. So with that sun angle, I was required to move my panels up into an open clearing. My battery setup is pretty simple. I use old car batteries that I've recycled out of cars. When I, when I put a new battery in at home, I'll bring the other battery up and use it for a lot of years. I use these detergent rectangular buckets. They work great for battery cases and I have a lid and I don't have to worry about any acid or any problems with that. For the cold winter, I, I run the batteries on the inside of the cabin just because the constant temperature helps me monitor my voltage better. In the summertime, I'll have them outside on a ledge to keep out of the cabin. You can see down below the digital voltmeter, which is a very important in this process to monitor how my power supply is holding out. Fully charged battery at rest is 12.74. A dead battery will read 11.95. So I try to only run it down each day to about 12.50 so I don't put a really deep charge on the battery and harm them. To control my power usage, I have these six outlets mounted just over my head, just over the top of where I cook in the stove. So as I work and as I move around the cabin or if I be there for a while, I only need to light up the spot that I'm actually working. You'd be surprised how stingy you can be on power when you know you might run out. This little light in the top center over the stove really lights the area up really well. It's a 32 LED light and with everything with a gloss finish on it and the old white porcelain cellulose from old homestead stoves and, and the bright pans, it lights the area up really well. I have this movable light mounted on my rocking chair or the platform rocker so that at night I can sit by the stove and, and read and again it's all about conserving power and putting the light just where I need it and only there. 
The light itself is on a long cord and it plugs into a 12 volt power outlet which I also use for charging my phone and different accessories like my MP3 player. So anything that will take a car charger I can charge up back here. My sound system here at the cabin is fairly simple. Just have a 12 volt car radio out of an old car I had. It's wired up to two speakers, one on each, each end of the cabin. If I want to, I can plug that little white unit on the left into my MP3 player and broadcast my MP3 music through the speaker system. But all that takes more power, so I don't do it too often. When I'm really getting stingy on power, and then I have to break out my little transistor radio there on the top with a set of earphones that's really conservative on power. I find that the radio itself uses about 0 .002 volts an hour. So that might mean something to somebody that uh, is really trying to compute how much power they need to, to use. What that means is my battery voltage drops by 0 .002 volt for every hour that I have the radio on. Lights are attached to the peak of the roof and they're all wired independently so I can turn on the ones I want pointing where I want and those saving a lot of power. When I was putting in the lighting system, Jim, one of the partners of this cabin, said, hey, I would like a I would like a light for my bed. Well, I thought it was a joke at first, but then I realized it was a grand idea. And not only did I put a light for, for each of the beds, but this one you can see there's a switch in the upper left, and then there's a switch below that, and that controls the radio. So when I go to bed at night, I like to read for a while, and I can have the light on just shining on my bed for reading. I can have the radio on, and when I'm sleepy, I don't need to get up to turn anything off. I can just click, click, and it's dark and quiet. And then the advantage is when I need to get up in the night to throw a log on the fire, I can flick that switch on, no fumbling for a flashlight or a lantern or anything else. It's really one of the nice advantages of having the LED light system 12 volt here in the cabin. For convenience, I've added a underground wire that runs out to the woodshed and the outhouse. So these three switches power an outside light with a door, a light on in the woodshed, and then as a real treat for visitors I have a light I can flick on inside the outhouse. My yard lights outside the cabin door are just the puck lights. Came from Menards in a set. In summary, I would just say that this system works for me. The cost has been very low, with the biggest cost, the $150 for the each, panel, each set of panels from Harbor Freight. The batteries, I just use old car batteries, five or six years old when I take them out of a vehicle. I bring them up here and use them. I just retired one battery that was almost 15 years old, it would no longer take a charge. One question many will have is, why don't I use the deep cycle batteries? Well, for one thing, they're very expensive, and mine are free. The other is, they will not hold a charge over the winter, so when I'm gone, they'll discharge, freeze, and, and they won't work anymore. I've had very good luck using these car batteries and only taking them down to about two-thirds charge, and they've lasted for years. So again, my system works for me and I'm very happy with it.